Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to review the brand new 2018 horror anthology movie, Deadlist, a movie that is due for release early in May. And I'm actually quite a big fan of horror anthology movies. Um, along with found footage, they are amongst my favorites in regards to horror movies. And when they're done right, they can be really, really effective. Now, while this movie um, has some budgetary constraints and it might not have the kind of budget of some of the more famous anthology movies what we actually get with this movie is really quite an imaginative and creative um, anthology movie that okay you could argue steals its idea from Death Note and fans of Death Note will watch this and see exactly where it gets its inspiration from but that doesn't mean that the actual stories that it gives us in these five um, anthology pieces aren't quite creative and inventive because they are. And what we get with this anthology movie is there is a group of actors, out of work actors, that are auditioning for a part. They're constantly up against each other for these parts. Um, and they're kind of friendly and then all of a sudden we start getting these stories where these actors are starting to be killed off one by one and it's in relation to this book we learn that one of these actors comes into possession of this book and lo and behold a bit like death note anybody's name that goes in the book um, meets a creative and inventive demise fairly quickly and we get like i said we get five stories here the first story focuses on one of the actors who's driving home from the audition and we hear on the radio that there is um, a black male um, wanted for some kind of crime um, and he makes some kind of flippant comment thank goodness I'm not black and the second he does that and looks in the mirror he is now a black man he's changed colour and um, it doesn't make it clear if he's just changed ethnicity or he's actually become that witness that uh, person who they're looking for in the crime basically the police turn up and it doesn't turn out well for him um, so that's the kind of the first story quite an interesting one um, the second one was a really weird one really bizarre but quite creative one it was almost like this that another one of these actors he goes home to his apartment and strange things start happening it's more like sensory and, uh, and feel he, every time he touches the water he can't hear or feel anything it's almost like he's, he's walked into some kind of alternate dimension and it really messes with his head and ultimately that doesn't lead anywhere good for him as well the third one was really freaky it was it was this actor again with his friend and they pick up this weird hitchhiker who turns out to be some kind of witch or something like that really freaky woman um, and they give they they think they're doing her a favor uh, take her to their house hoping to get her some help or something and it doesn't end well as you can imagine but i, I found this one a bit creepy to be honest i mean some stuff they're doing it's completely unrealistic but i did find find it pretty creepy especially the, the old woman playing the like the witch person in this one the next one was a, a like a beach surfer dude who's one of the actors again who um, goes for a little surf in the ocean? Some to he gets infected with this toxic thing, disease, and he basically throughout the rest of this story just dissolves. And it's it's pretty gruesome this one, if you like. It, it, arguably my favourite one. It reminded me very much of um, oh, the very famous anthology movie, you know, where they're um, they're on uh, they're out in the ocean. That thing grabs them and like dissolves them very, I, I, I quite enjoyed this one but it, it is pretty gruesome I thought they did really well with the effects in this one and the final one again arguably my favourite one was one of these actors who it, it was actually quite funny this one um, he gets stalked by a killer clown that would give Pennywise a run for his money but it's like I said it's quite fun this one um, and I was right those are your stories and they're all intertwined by um, one of the actors and his another actor who's his uh, who they live together the flatmates who discover this book and figure it all out and do some kind of blood curse together all that kind of stuff 
So that's like the anchor between the stories, that. But I, I have to say, as an anthology movie, it was pretty good, this. There were, normally, traditionally, there are some really quite weak stories in anthology movies, and I don't think there was any that you could point at and say, that was rubbish, I didn't enjoy that. There are some weaker than others, but I actually think they get better as it goes on, the stories. Um, and that's unusual. Normally, you get a mixed bag, but I think, for me, personally, the stories gradually improved as they went on. Like I say, it is very low budget. I think the way it was sewn together didn't make an awful lot of sense because it was a bit confusing, you know. And the stories started happening before you realize, before you knew who had the book. And then I think it was either after the second, or, uh, the, the first or second story it shows somebody discovering the book. So it didn't make a lot of sense in, in regards to how those sequences were sewn together and the and the story that anchors it all together. I think that could have been done a little bit better. Um, but other than that, I have to say I quite enjoyed this. Um, as a fan of anthology movies, this is one that I would look to own definitely. I think it's if you if you're a fan of these sort of movies, horror anthologies, it's it's certainly worth watching. And for me, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 because I had a good time watching this movie. Um, and I think they've done a really good job with the budget that they had. Pretty effective stuff. So thank you very much for watching it.